Thank you. And welcome back again for the second part, which is our planning board meeting for Wednesday or Tuesday, April the 2nd. I'm going to call our meeting to order. Are there any declarations of conflict? Not seeing any. Deputy Mayor Yankoff, as well as chair for this committee, is joining us from Australia on the phone. She got up bright and early this morning. So, Deputy Mayor, thank you for, for this. And I'll try and do my best to fill your big shoes. And Rosemary is also online from our planning board. Thank you. So I need someone to approve our agenda today. Moved by Jackie, seconded by Chris Fournier. All those in favor of that? Great. Deputy Mayor, you're good. I'm good. Thank you, Rosemary. You're OK? Yes, that's fine. Wonderful. I need someone to adopt our minutes of our planning board meeting from March the 20th. Moved by Bobby Kennedy, seconded by Jackie. All those in favor of that? Deputy Mayor? In favor. And Rosemary? In favor. Thank you. Any business arising from those minutes? Seeing none, we'll move right into reports. Um, there are no requests for any variances. We're into rezoning and site specific. The first one is for 126 Rochford Street, PID 345744. And David uh, Gungram is going to present this application. Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as the Chair mentioned, this is an application for site specific exemption to the zoning and development bylaw. Uh, for property located at 126 Rochford Street, PID uh, 345744. Uh, the details of the request are as follows. Uh, the applicants, applicants have made a request for site-specific exemption in the downtown neighborhood zone DN that applies to the subject property to allow for an office use, being a law office, as a principal main use on the property, whereas an office use is otherwise only permitted as a home occupation that is accessory to a permitted main use within the downtown neighborhood zone. Uh, just some context around the site. Uh, following slide shows an aerial view of the subject property, which is an interior uh, residential lot located on the east side of Rochford Street on the block which is bounded by Euston Street to the north and Fitzroy Street to the south. Uh, the lot has historically contained a single detached dwelling that has existed on the lot as a residential use since approximately 1910. And I'll just note, as was noted in our planning report, that the, um, the house in question is a designated heritage home uh, under the uh, city's, um, under the provincial uh, heritage legislation. Uh, so with regard to the zoning bylaw, section 29.1 allows for an office use in the downtown neighborhood zone. However, only as an accessory uh, use uh, would, as a home occupation where the size of the use cannot exceed a maximum of either 25% of the gross floor area of the dwelling or 46.5 square meters, 500 square feet, whichever is the smaller figure. The applicants are proposing to convert the entirety of the existing structure to accommodate the, the office use. Based on the floor plans that have been provided, approximately 120 square meters, or just shy of 1,300 square feet of the total gross floor area of the existing building, approximately 32%, would be used as the dedicated office uh, space, including meeting and reception space. Uh, the remainder of the uh, dwelling uh, gross floor area would be utilized for washrooms, uh, kitchen, kitchenette, as well as connecting hallways, uh, staircases, and storage uh, rooms, storage areas. Uh, the next slide details a floor plan that's been provided by the applicants. So this shows uh, the proposed layout for the use. Um, the office spaces are shown here, here, and in the upstairs as well here, or sorry, the main floor here, um, reception area here, meeting room on the main floor, and uh, the remainder of the space again would be connecting hallways, uh, non-office areas, kitchen, kitchenette, and uh, storage, uh, storage rooms, uh, like what's shown on the second floor here. Uh, so with respect to the zoning bylaw, property contains an existing driveway and access onto Rochford Street that runs parallel with the south boundary of the lot. 
Uh, the driveway is approximately three meters in width, has a length of approximately 20 meters, which are measurements based on 2023 uh, air photo imagery. As per section 46.1.1 of the zoning bylaw, the minimum required dimension for a parking space is 2.6 by 5.5 meters. And based on this, the existing driveway could accommodate enough on-site parking for up to uh, three vehicles or three parking spaces. Uh, the proposed office use uh, would be wholly self-contained with it in the existing building and would require no exterior cosmetic or functional changes to the building. Uh, the use would generally have associated operating hours that would be during daytime hours. And um, the applicants have indicated to us that um, based on the proposed work, again, they would um, be not requiring any exterior changes to the building nor any major interior renovation work that would uh, necessitate a building and permit application in the future. So essentially it's a repurposing of the existing interior space to house uh, the office use. Um, in conclusion, the existing site at 126 Rochford Street represents a limited opportunity uh, for change of use from residential to small-scale employment, limited office use on a site which is in the downtown neighborhood zone that would not be out of character with the prevailing residential nature of the surrounding area. Uh, planning staff are of the opinion that the applicants have provided sufficient information and details uh, concerning the proposed development, uh, that the proposal should proceed to public consultation to gauge the thoughts, opinions, and feedback of both council and the residents of uh, Charlottetown. And therefore, uh, Planning and Heritage Department encourages that Planning Board uh, recommend to Council to proceed to public consultation for the request uh, to allow for its site-specific exemption in the downtown neighborhood zone as it pertains to property located at 126 Rochford Street, PID number 345744, in order to allow for an office use, law office, as a principal main use on the subject property whereas a lot, an office use is only permitted as a home occupation, which is accessory to a permitted principal use in the downtown neighborhood zone. Uh, so that is a summary of the request to planning board and I'll hand it back over to the chair uh, to help answer any questions that members may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, for your report. Uh, it's one to go to public consultation and as you said, it's always good to send something along and gather as much information. Uh, are there any questions regarding this report? Bobby? Just um, out of curiosity, how many people would be working in the building? Uh, through the chair, Member Kenny, I'm of the understanding that it would be at present time from what the applicant indicated to us, uh, two lawyers and one admin is what they were telling us initially. Um, notwithstanding the fact that the building may allow room for additional growth in the future, but essentially three staff is what's been communicated to us at the present time, yeah. yeah. And then clients, any concern about the parking? Three spots doesn't seem like very many for a, a building like that. Yeah, through the chair, um, we do have some reservations about that, which we'll, we'll reserve for a future recommendation report uh, that yeah. will come back to the board and, 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 uh, and to council. Um, at this point, we don't even know what the public has to say on the matter, so we'll be reserving comments on that to the future, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Perfect, yeah, sounds good. Deputy Mayor Yankoff, do you have any questions on sending this to public consultation? No, I had a few con um, few questions similar to Bobby's, but um, I I I see the next step is the public consultation process. So um, wait to hear what the public has to say. So all good. Thank you. Thank you. And Rosemary, do you have anything that you'd like to ask? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My only question is just if this exemption goes through, does it um, stay with the property on a go forward basis? Uh, through the chair, uh, to answer the question, Rosemary, that, that's correct. The, the change would run with the property. Uh, it would be in effect uh, forever on regardless of who owns the property. So, you know, in, it's not to say that in the future it can't revert back to a residential use, which would otherwise be permitted. But forever on, if this is approved, there would be that permission that the entirety of the building could be used as wholly as an office uh, space or office use. So that would run with the property, yes. Thank you. Okay, so are we comfortable supporting staff's recommendation? Do I have someone to put that on the floor? We'll send this on. Moved by Councillor Beck, seconded by 
Jackie, all those in favor of moving this? Everyone here, Deputy Mayor Yankoff? In favor. In favor, Rosemary? In favor. Okay, that's unanimous, thank you very much. Thank you, David, for that. Our second application is the Hillsborough Park Community, or presentation, yes, Hillsborough Park Community Concept for the PID numbers 192252 and 422642 requesting to recommend council to approve. So I'm gonna let you present this. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, so I won't belabor this uh, uh, any longer than I need to. Um, the summary of the request is shown on the slide before you. Uh, so this is a request to amend both the zoning and development bylaw as well as the city's official plan. Uh, summary of the amendments is shown here. So amendment to Appendix A, future land use map of the OP, uh, to migrate the lands from the existing land use designations into uh, the comprehensive planning area designation of the official plan. And similarly to um, change the zoning of the subject lands uh, from the current uh, multiple zones that apply and placing the subject lands in the comprehensive development area zone or CDA zone of the zoning and development bylaw. And part and parcel with that, there would have to be amendments to Appendix B and Appendix I of the zoning and development bylaw, which are uh, essentially accessory amendments to, to the main amendment to Appendix G. Um, the intent, the overall intent of these proposed amendments is to allow for future development of a master plan community on the subject lands that would include a total range of 1,211 up to 1,476 dwelling units, which would consist of a, rain, a mix of single detached duplex townhome and multi-unit uh, residential dwellings. Uh, next slide shows a location of the subject properties. Uh, they are located uh, adjacent to um, the Wrights Creek um, tributary of the Hillsborough River, which is found to the north and east of the subject property. Uh, to the west uh, and south of the subject property are established uh, existing low density uh, um, uh, uh, neighborhoods which are predominantly uh, composed of single detached uh, dwellings. Uh, the proposed development is, is, uh, has been put forth to proceed in three phases. Uh, the following slide shows the phases of development, which would um, uh, proceed from west to east. So phase one shown here would contain the bulk of the low density development that's being proposed and proceeding uh, eastward into phase two and phase three where uh, the higher density uh, multi-unit and townhome uh, units would, would be found. Uh, again, this next slide shows another perspective of the site development uh, concept plan. Again, this uh, shows um, the lower density uses in yellow and the higher density uses shown in red on, on the concept plan. And uh, the concept plan at the present time also shows a central, centrally located uh, community park shown here, which would be within phase two of the development. Um, the uh, road network is also proposed to be um, adapted to, to the development. Um, there are several new road connections which are proposed. Uh, there'd be two road, road network connections onto Acadian Drive shown here, which would link into phase three of the development. A uh, connection to Hunter's, the uh, turn in Hunter's Lane shown here, which would link into um, the boundary area between phase one and two of the development, as well as a uh, extension of Westcombe Crescent up to the west, linking up to the west side of the site. So again, four um, road network connections between the proposed development and the existing uh, municipal road network. Uh, the next slide is a um, schematic of the um, findings of the traffic impact study. This shows uh, where the modeled uh, traffic out of 100% of the traffic that's generated by the site where that 100% is broken down in a proportional fashion. So again, um, this is showing uh, approximately one third of the traffic um, coming off the site proceeding uh, to the west of the site and the remaining two thirds to, to the south and southeast. Um, this is a summary of the findings of the traffic impact study. Out of the, there was nine intersections which were 
analyzed by the traffic engineers that prepared the study, and out of those nine intersections, there was two that were identified for potential uh, future road upgrades, those being uh, the intersection at Acadian Drive and Longboat, Longboat Drive, and the um, intersection at Murchison Lane and uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital uh, driveways. Uh, the next several slides show the uh, proposed municipal servicing plans. Uh, this first slide shows the proposed water servicing for the development. I'll note, as was previously noted in prior reporting and in our current report, that um, city uh, water and sewer staff have indicated a uh, preference that all the systems in the development be, be looped. Uh, there is a gap shown here within phase two of the development, which uh, city staff have um, recommended it against. Um, but again, these details would be dialed in through confirmation of the future um, concept development plan and through future site plan uh, agreement or agreements for, for the proposed development. Uh, but I'm just noting that for uh, um, uh, board's information. Follow the next slide shows proposed uh, sanitary servicing for the development. Uh, there are two uh, pumping stations that are proposed, uh, the first one being in phase one of the development and the second one to the east uh, shown here in, in phase three of the development. And um, city staff uh, from uh, sewer and water uh, were in general agreement with uh, the need for these proposed uh, pumping stations. And lastly, a uh, slide showing proposed uh, servicing for stormwater management. And uh, I'll note uh, as part of this, there are two uh, stormwater retention areas uh, shown to the north of the site within the 100 meter buffer area. Uh, from the um, Wrights Creek uh, tributary to the Hillsborough River um, that are, that are uh, proposed. Um, something new uh, since our last uh, reporting to Planning Board, a uh, public meeting was held on March um, the 11th um, with council and members of the public who attended. Um, as per section 3.10.4 of the zoning bylaw, uh, February 27th, City Council approved the request to proceed to the public meeting. On March 4th, a written notification was sent to all landowners within 100 meters of the boundaries of the subject properties. A total of 206 letters were sent to residents to advise them of the March 11th public meeting to request uh, any response and comments. And uh, to date, uh, there was only one written response that was received. Uh, which was received following the public meeting that expressed support for the general support for the proposal. And that was a letter that was received from the Wrights Creek uh, Watershed uh, Group. And just a summary of the general feedback that was received at the public meeting on March 11th. There were several residents who spoke at the public meeting to ask questions concerning the phasing of the development that regarded building types, uh, local traffic, and impacts to the 100 meter natural buffer. Um, a copy of the public meeting minutes has been provided as an attachment to our report. And uh, at the public meeting, uh, both uh, planning staff and the, the applicants answered uh, the questions that were posed and provided clarity and confirmation on the points that were raised by local residents. Uh, I'll note that there were no comments of significant uh, concern, particularly negative concern, uh, nor any opposition uh, that was um, raised, uh, opposition to the proposal that was raised during the public meeting. Um, just going over our, our uh, two main planning documents, uh, the, the official, first starting with the official plan. Uh, the application proposes to consolidate various existing land use designations into a single land use designation being the, the comprehensive planning area designation in order to facilitate the development. Uh, the following three uh, subsections of the official plan are particularly of particular uh, note to this uh, development. Section 3.1 states that containing urban sprawl by staging new development with concern, concurrency for provision of, un, of underground services is preferred. I'll note for members of the board that this development proposes to do exactly that. Uh, section 3.2 uh, states that there should be allowance for moderately higher densities versus traditional greenfield sites to create new development that is harmonious with new development. And again, the proposed development um, is looking to um, 
essentially upzone uh, the subject lands to achieve higher densities, although in a moderate fashion, uh, so that they do blend harmoniously, more harmoniously with the surrounding development that's nearby. And lastly, uh, section 3.3 encourages uh, development in fully serviced areas of the city. Uh, it's noted that the subject property has direct access to full municipal services, being water, wastewater, stormwater, and local road networks, and is in proximity to established uh, neighborhoods. Uh, the next uh, document, the East uh, Secondary Plan of the Official Plan, the East Royalty Master Plan, uh, identifies the subject properties as the site for future low-density residential, medium-density residential and institutional use, particularly a uh, future school site that was identified in the Secondary Plan. Uh, the intent of the Secondary Plan is to provide long-term vision for the area to ensure a well-planned contiguous development that is considered broadly and not on a piecemeal or ad hoc basis, uh, which is um, precisely what the uh, um, applicants have brought forth is, is a comprehensive uh, development proposal that is to be considered broadly. Uh, the applicants, uh, I'll, I'll note, are not proposing an institutional designation as part of the request, nor has a future school site been identified as part of the plan. Um, this was brought up during our previous meeting with Planning Board, and um, at the present time, um, planning staff note, have note that migrating the subject property to the CDA zone as well as changing the land use designation does not necessarily preclude, preclude a school from being included as part of the future development given uh, the malleable nature of the provisions of the CDA zone, uh, particularly that um, there needs to be um, confirmation of a development concept plan uh, that would have to be brought back to council through a public process that would require uh, future consideration and confirmation. So through that future process, there still would be opportunity to um, consider whether or not a school site uh, should be included as part of the uh, proposed development or not. Uh, lastly, uh, the zoning and development bylaw, uh, as per section 44.1, permitted uses for the CDA zone, development within a CDA zone shall be subject to approval by council of a future development concept plan and a related future development agreement. Uh, working site plans and buildings shall be approved by council in future on the recommendation of planning board for each phase of development within a CDA zone. Uh, future site plan and proposed building locations would have to comply with future requirements of the site specific CDA zone that would apply. Uh, given um, these uh, features of the CDA zone, uh, planning staff are of the opinion that the comprehensive and expansive nature of the proposed development that the CDA zone and its associated mechanisms and requirements are the most appropriate uh, pathway by which to pursue, pursue the envisioned development under the zoning bylaw. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the proposal represents a unique and rare opportunity for greenfield development on a large scale within the city of Charlottetown that is surrounded by existing developed neighborhoods with immediate access to existing municipal services. Uh, the proposal is timely in terms of providing long-term predictable phase development that will contribute greatly to Charlottetown's broader housing shortage in the years ahead. Planning staff are of the opinion that the applicants have provided uh, sufficient information and details uh, concerning the proposed development that the proposal should be considered for approval by council. And while planning staff do have concerns regarding the lack of a confirmed school site for the subject lands, it is acknowledged that a future development concept plan uh, that would confirm site-specific development details will have to be evaluated in future and considered uh, for adoption by council subject to a separate uh, public process. And so this brings us to our recommendation concerning this application. Uh, the plan that the Planning and Heritage Department encourages that the Planning Board recommend to Council to approve the Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Official Plan Amendment requests that pertain to the unaddressed properties uh, identified as PID numbers 192252 and 422642, which propose future development of a master plan community on the subject properties that would include a total range of 1,211 to 1,476 dwelling units consisting of a mix of single detached duplex townhome and multi-unit residential dwellings. Um, so thank you for your time, members of the board, and I'll hand it out back over to the chair. Great report again, David, very detailed. Um, I am happy to see that you are forward thinking as far as the school and trying to have that as part of a plan for something con confirmed because we know that 
we are strapped out there. So that's just a little plug for my own area. So basically, we've done the public consultation. We've heard from residents. It's been positive feedback. It's 1,200 housing units, as we just saw through David's report. It's very detailed. Are there any questions that we have for David concerning this at this time? Jackie? Thank you. Um, no, I thought the report was really detailed. I think it makes a lot of sense to treat this as a CDA zone. Um, I did have, and I, I really liked a lot of the feedback that was provided, especially from the uh, Wrights Creek Watershed Group. Um, one question I did have, though, and I'm not sure if I'm missing something, it's about the concept plan um, and the stormwater retention. I'm wondering, like, does it make sense to be directing stormwater runoff into an environmentally sensitive area, like especially with pollutants that might be found on the roads and things like that is like uh, is there any thought around that uh, through the chair uh, to answer the question Jackie um, that's what's currently proposed on on the draft concept but that would be subject to confirmation through the future confirmed development concept plan that does have to go back to council go back through public process so I mean what you see may not necessarily be precisely what you get when we get to that stage I, you know, if those stormwater uh, retention ponds are placed within the environmental buffer, um, it's not to say that they necessarily can't be there um, with some measures put in place to provide for, you know, filtering of, of, of overflow into those ponds. But uh, we're not there yet. Those are details that still have to be worked out through confirming the actual development concept plan. So there's another step we've yet to get to to say whether or not they're actually going to go there or not. So That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Deputy Mayor, do you have a question or a comment? Uh, I'm good. Um, Jackie kind of flushed out one of my questions, and you know, this is um, this is kind of like one of the, we're getting close to the final step. So I think this is a, a great um, a great future um, project. Thank you. Yeah, just one step in the process. Rosemary, do you have any questions or comments at this time? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. So, Madam the rec Chair, oh, go I ahead, Your Worship. David, um, just go to slide 34. 34. So, you have, that's the subject prop property now. It's MUR, Institutional R2S, and R1S, correct? That's what I'm looking at? Is that the uh, present layer of the property? I'm, I'm just Page gonna, 34, page up, the digital copy. Uh, oh, you don't have it like us. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure Maybe you don't have it. I'm not this sure is part of our the, package. Yeah, I'm not sure if we have that on the PowerPoint, but uh, I'll flip to my That's all right. Um, so that is being changed to CDA, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All of it? The whole piece of the 82 acres? Uh, those, the two PIDs, anywhere that those zones apply yeah. within those two PIDs is being changed. I believe that that doesn't account for the complete entirety of the subject lands, but it's, it's the vast majority. It's greater than 90% because yeah. there are some small portions that are otherwise in. So with CDA, David, every time you change the use, you have to have a public consultation. Um, that, that's... In essence, that's correct. Yeah. So, so does that slow down the process? Like, look, this land has been talked about for years. It's, um, I don't know how many governments it's gone through, but it's finally this government has made a decision to let's develop it. And kudos to them. Thanks to Daryl for uh, Bradley for, uh, being here. I know he's with the um, provincial government and what they're doing with this project and Ron, Rob LeBlanc from... Uh, Phantom uh, Studio. So, look, the concept is great, but is the CDA, we're always using that CDA as sort of, it, it, it's a catch all, but it's pretty sp specific. If you change the use, you have to go to public consultation. So, that slows down the process of developing this property. Um, to try and answer that as best I can through the chair, the, the point of the CDA is to really allow for creativity in the development yeah. that, that you can almost do. Think about anything that you might want. Um, by putting it in the CDA zone, it then triggers the next step that we have to come back to council with the proposed concept plan that has to be uh, confirmed, essentially. So it opens the door to what the developer has dreamed up 
as being able to be put forward to council for confirmation. So that's the next step after we have the, the zoning uh, confirmed uh, that we can proceed to that step for council to look at in detail the detailed concept and, and either and consider it and maybe have thought for changes to that concept or acceptance of that concept or, or rejection of that concept even so yeah. yeah and if I again this is the document we have page 32 talking it, it addresses the summary of the applications positive negative and neutral attributes and it says for the short shortcomings proposed road connections to existing network will increase traffic flows through local roads within low density neighborhoods so if you go back to your slide on the road network which is 36 i think on my page um that's one of the concerns i heard at both meetings the one that was held out at the care for the um Centre Care for out at the French school, and then I heard it after our public meeting on this. Because if you look at the roads on page 36, your road system, um, the one that takes it directly in is out the Northbridge Parkway, right? That takes you right onto the property. So there's going to be a roadway going in there, correct? That, that's correct, yeah. And there's going to be one that will be jetting off to Westcombe. Right? Correct, on the west side, yes. Yeah. yeah, and then one, the future access will be going on to Acadian Drive, correct? Uh, correct, there's two proposed connections to Acadian Drive. Um, yeah. And if I go back to the slide on the existing, the, that R1S that connects to Acadian Drive, It's like th that all that property will be developed right up to Acadian Drive, correct? Correct, correct. There'll be a gap between where this is, the new development's located and where Acadian Drive actu right. actually currently exists. And yeah. two, there'll be two, uh, two points, one entry egress off Acadian. That correct. won't be a problem because that is a connector road yeah. uh, into the Riverview Estates and now to this, to this development. But it's Northridge and Westcombe, and do we have any other connections? There's there's also a new one, right? Longboat. Yeah, uh, correct. There, well, Longboat would be one of the connections down to Acadian. Um, okay. And, and sorry, th through the chair, I'll just note that the um, the connections to Acadian are that's to facilitate Phase Three, which would be the yeah. high the highest density portion of the development, and would be the last part of the development to be uh, implemented essentially. So. A devel the development almost—it's almost a logical sequencing that the developers are proposing that we start with the low density development to ease ease things into the road network, yeah. and we're finishing with the most intense, impactful, highest density development with the idea that the road network will have to play catch up to what's happening. So we'll start with, you know, you could call it the low hanging fruit or the low, the, the the less lesser impactful form of development from a traffic perspective proceeding to the more impactful uh, at a later point in time. So, yeah. um, And just a couple more questions, Madam Chair. So your zoning, zoning uh, bylaw amendments and official plan amendments, they will have to happen before we get into, like, can this project start if council gives a green light? Can they start right away and work within the existing zoning development bylaw, official plan, all the tools that we have there, they can. Yeah, yeah, through the chair, uh, there's nothing, again, there is another step after this, after the zoning's changed, where they have to circle back to have the development concept confirmed and approved by council. So this step is to change the zoning and the official plan designation so that we can get there. Uh, but we can certainly get there through the existing policy documents. We don't have to wait for the new OP or the okay. new zoning bylaw to be in place to enable this to move forward, but there is one more planning process step after the zoning and, and the land use designations have been changed and that's to confirm the concept absolutely uh, at a more gran granular level yeah. yeah and the last question madam chair is about the stormwater retention ponds my understanding is that the buffer zones will be 30 meters correct around wrights creek 
Um, by default, yes. However, there is a, a 100 meter buffer that's been put in place. Uh, 100 meter. There's a, there's a 100 meter buffer for development from Wrights Creek. That has, so the, uh, the the otherwise default 30 meter buffer that's prescribed in legislation has been extended out to 100 meters by the province. So develop. That's why you see on the concept plan, there's a much wider buffer there where no buildings or, or roads are right. proposed. A stormwater management, stormwater retention facility, one could argue you can create these to resemble a naturalized state. So yeah. if you consider that, it's not just a, a concrete hole in the ground that's filled up with water like a dam or reservoir, right? So one could make the argument, is that development or is that not? And you might be splitting hairs on that. So. Yeah. And, and the reason I bring it up, Dave, because stormwater management is always an issue, all new developments. In the end, this stormwater flows into the rivers, but this will have 100 meters of retention before it's actually going into Wrights Creek. So there's a lot of filtration Kirk. that will happen compared to other uh, subdivisions. And you know, I'm not saying 100 meter buffers for any subdivision, I'm just saying yeah. this is a huge, uh, yeah. this is a, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna say it's a game changer, but it's really, they're thinking about how it will affect the environment. And Wrights Creek is a sensitive area. So are all our waterways. But I think the province has taken exceptional uh, good care and being proactive in, in order to provide you know, the best environmental uh, uh, stewardship on this project. Yeah. Would you agree? Uh, through the chair, I'd, I'd agree with that 100%, uh, Mr. Mayor. And um, the, the buffer that's in place now is um, greater than what's otherwise normally required by a factor of three, or greater than three. So one could make a legitimate argument that you're going to have three times the amount of natural filtration and buffering to Wrights Creek than you otherwise may have, uh, given that, that extended buffer area. So. Thank you. So Planning and Heritage Department is encouraging us to recommend to approve the Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Official Plan Amendment. Do I have someone to move that? Moved by His Worship, seconded by Jackie. All those in favor? Um, everybody here? Deputy Mayor, or Deputy Mary Yankoff? In favor. Rosemary? In favor. So that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Great report again, David. We have one more under our rezoning and site specifics today in front of us, and that's the property at 503 University Avenue, the PID number 374140. David, you're again going to present this. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the next application is a request for a zoning amendment and an official plan amendment that regard 503 University Avenue, PID 374140. Uh, the next slide provides a summary of the requested amendments. I'll just run through very quickly. Uh, the, the OPA would seek to amend Appendix A, a future land use map of the official plan, uh, to change the land use designation from the subject property from institutional to comprehensive planning area. And uh, dovetailing with this would be the re required amendment to the zoning and development bylaw uh, to migrate the lands from the current institutional zone to the comprehensive development area or CDA zone under Appendix G. And, um, and then um, accessory to that would be required amendments to Appendix B and Appendix I uh, that would have to be updated to reflect the desired zoning change. Uh, the overall intent of the proposed amendments is to allow for the future development of an eight-story, 257-unit uh, apartment building on the subject property. And I'll note where the eight stories uh, do step back to a six-story height uh, over a portion of, of the building footprint. Uh, the next slide is a... Uh, uh, location map showing the uh, location of the subject property. Uh, subject property is an interior lot which is located on the west side of University Avenue. Uh, it's directly across from the University of Prince Edward Island uh, UPEI campus and uh, it's um, within an existing established neighborhood. There are uh, townhome developments located directly abutting to the north and to the south and uh, west are located uh, lower density uh, semi-detached and uh, single detached uh, residential developments. Uh, subject property is the former location of the Maritime Christian College, which has since closed. And uh, I'll just note, as was noted at our previous board meeting, that the city issued a demolition permit for the existing buildings and structures that were associated with the former uh, private Christian college on the subject property. 
the next slide is a development concept plan for the proposed apartment building. Um, it is a, a U-shaped building uh, shown here. Um, the eight-story uh, elevation would be this portion of the building stepping back to six stories at the rear and actually eventually to a two-story elevation for one of the main entrances that faces to the west. Uh, there are three proposed road connections, two of which would be uh, from University Avenue to the east of the site and a proposed new road connection uh, to the rear that would be to the west connecting to Queen Street, which is a local road uh, to the west. And I didn't mention this before, but University Avenue is a main arterial uh, road, uh, one of the busiest thoroughfares, as all of you uh, probably know, within the city of Charlottetown. Uh, next few slides show the elevations, proposed elevations of the building. Uh, first is elevation that would face east towards uh, University Avenue. So this is what you would see uh, from the main uh, traffic route that fronts uh, the property to the east. Uh, the next is the rear elevation or the west elevation facing to the back towards the uh, lower density residential neighborhoods uh, that front onto Queen Street. And as I mentioned before, one of the main entrances to the rear would have a step back uh, down, down from eight, down to six, and then eventually down to two stories at the very rear, uh, shown here. Uh, with a lot of articulation with balconies and, and a mixture of, of window types and window geometries to give the building um, some, some diversity in its uh, cosmetic appearance. Uh, the last two slides. Um, show the elevations facing north, and I think we might have missed, yeah, we did miss the south elevation, but the north and south elevations, you can just imagine this as a mirror image uh, that would show you what, what the uh, elevation would look like facing south. So this is what space would be facing north towards uh, the townhouse developments that are immediately adjacent to the site, and a mirrored image of this would, would show you what's uh, being proposed facing south towards the single and semi-detached dwellings to the south of the property. Uh, next slide is a breakdown uh, of the calculations from the traffic impact study. Uh, similar to the last application, um, this shows where the total percentage breakdown would, would flow to in terms of the local road network. Um, out of the 100% that would be generated, 100% of new traffic generated by the subject property, approximately 65% would flow east uh, directly onto University Avenue, 40% directed to the south towards Belved the intersection with Belvedere, and 25% uh, directed north uh, going uh, uh, towards um, uh, past the UPI campus, and with the remaining 35% uh, dumping out onto Queen Street to the rear or the west of the property. And as a result of that, uh, the traffic impact study engineers evaluated the four local, nearest local intersections, uh, University Avenue and the new uh, laneway or driveway rather to Queen Street to, to, to the rear. Uh, possible um, inter, uh, intersection upgrades uh, may be needed at that three-way intersection. Uh, they evaluated also impacts to University Avenue and Belvedere Avenue to the south, University Avenue and Brown Court uh, to the north, and there was no uh, up, uh, suggested upgrades recommended for those intersections. Uh, the intersection that would be to the far southwest of the general location of the property at Belvedere and Queen Street was recommended for uh, possible uh, intersection upgrades at the four-way intersection at that location. And, uh, oh, that's uh, mislabeled, uh, that should just say uh, development uh, concept plan. Um, actually, I don't know why that slide is there, to be honest, because we saw this before, that just, I would just uh, disregard that. Um, the, in terms of what's occurred to date, um, as per section 3.10.4 of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, on February 27th, uh, City Council approved a request to proceed to public consultation. On March 4th, uh, 2024, a written uh, notification letter was sent to property owners within 100 meters of the boundaries of the subject property. A total of 47 letters were sent to residents advising them of the public meeting that occurred on March 11th. Uh, March 11th, uh, we had a public meeting 
to allow the applicants an opportunity to speak to their the proposal and for members of council and local residents to be provided opportunity to ask questions regarding the proposal. Uh, as of the current date, no written responses were received from members of the public either prior to or following uh, the public meeting. And just a summary of the general feedback, again, no residents. Uh, we didn't receive any written correspondence from residents uh, prior to or following the public meeting. Uh, it's noted that as per the meeting minutes that are attached as to this report, uh, that no resident spoke at the public meeting to ask questions concerning the development. However, there were questions that were asked by uh, city councillors that concerned site access and parking uh, that were uh, clarified and confirmed by the applicant during the meeting as well as city planning staff. And again, a summary of those minutes are provided uh, as an attachment to the report uh, this evening. And I'll note that there was no, no comments of significant concern or opposition to the proposal that were raised uh, during the public meeting or thereafter. With respect to uh, the uh, planning documents that apply to the proposal, uh, the official plan, uh, the application proposes to migrate the land use designation as noted from institutional uh, to the comprehensive planning area designation in order to facilitate the development. Uh, the following three subsections of the official plan have uh, bearing on this application. Section 3.1 uh, speaks to the promotion of compact form, infill development, and the efficient use of infrastructure and in public facil service facilities. Uh, the proposed uh, development is an infill development uh, that would uh, seek to achieve uh, high density development in a compact form on the subject property and uh, utilizing ex access to existing uh, public infrastructure being uh, sewer water, uh, storm water and uh, road network systems. Uh, section 3.2 of the city's official plan states that preserving built form and density of existing neighborhoods and ensuring that new development is harmonious with surroundings. Um, I'll note on this that while the development it uh, is perhaps at odds with, with what is directly adjacent and behind it. It is uh, proposing high density development along a major thoroughfare in the city of Charlottetown uh, that would leverage uh, the existing uh, services and amenities and, and also support, support them uh, conversely in the area. Um, the developers have proposed step backs that would buffer the massing of the use uh, from the low density neighborhood that's located to the rear to the west of the site. And I'll note that the building is uh, proposed to be located forward to the site closer to university versus uh, further away from it. So it's, it's not even you know, particularly centered on the site in a physical location sense that the developers have opted to push it as far forward to the main arterial road as possible to buffer that impact of the massing from the lower density land uses that are nearby. And lastly, section 3.3 of the official plan encourages development in fully serviced areas of the city. Uh, it's noted that the subject property has direct access to full municipal services, water, wastewater, stormwater, and local road networks, and is in proximity to established uh, neighborhoods. Um, the zoning bylaw, uh, as per section 44.1 for the comprehensive development area zone, uh, CDA zone development within a CDA zone so shall be subject to approval by council of a future development concept plan and a related future development agreement. Uh, working site plans and buildings plans shall be approved by council in future on the recommendation of planning board for each phase of development within a CDA zone. It is noted that this development is proposed to proceed as a single phase. Uh, future site plan and proposed building locations would have to comply with the future requirements of the site-specific CDA zone that would apply through that confirmed uh, future um, <coughs> development concept plan. And gi given the nature of the development and what's proposed, planning staff are of the opinion uh, that uh, the comprehensive expansive nature of the proposed development that the CDA zone and its associated requirements are in fact the most appropriate mechanism and pathway by which to pursue the envisioned development under uh, the zoning and development bylaw. So in conclusion, uh, the proposal represents a unique opportunity for the repurposing of the underutilized institutional site with new uh, infill multi-unit residential development which would be located along a main thoroughfare. Uh, the proposed development 
is to be established as a four rent multi-unit apartment building, multi-unit apartment building located directly across from the University of Prince Edward Rhode Island campus and could provide and therefore could provide synergies and support the local housing market, uh, particularly as far as the student population is concerned. Uh, the increased housing supply at this location uh, could also serve to relieve housing pressures within the rental market uh, on other uh, locations and areas of the city. Uh, so this brings us to our recommendation. The Planning and Heritage Department is encourages that the Planning Board recommend to Council to approve the Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Official Plan Amendment requests that pertain to 503 University Avenue, PID number 374140, which proposes future development of an eight-story stepping back to six story 257 unit apartment building on the subject property. Uh, that is the um, recommendation that we're putting forward to planning board this evening and um, I'll turn it back over to the chair to help answer any questions that members may have. Thank you. Another great report, lots of details. Um, one question I just want clarity on David is um, through the public works feedback, they said they would prefer not to have vehicles making left turns out of the development across three lanes onto University Avenue, but understand the need to allow it. There's lots of write out onlys that they'll do. I mean, to me, that is something that I think would be required. I mean, to get out left there with the way the traffic's moving, and it is, it's three lanes kind of in certain spots with the left turn, the middle, and then, and then there's the other two sides, like that's five lanes really that you're looking at crossing there. Yeah. So I think that, that should be revisited, the need to allow it, maybe if there's a fire, but other than that, there should be. Well, uh, good questions, uh, Chair McCabe, and, and through the chair, um, I'll note that um, regardless of what's being proposed right now, um, that when we get to the building permit stage or even perhaps before that, ahead of that, uh, the development will require new access permits be issued from Public Works, and that would that allow another point of contact, another opportunity to revisit this with Public Works, uh, because their access permits will stipulate what type of access this is, how wide it is. Um, it could be that we land on that it's appropriate that it'd be a, a right out only uh, at that north access and also at the south access as well. Um, so there's another further points of contact where this can be firmed up from a traffic safety perspective and it's conceivable that there could be upgrades in this area of University Avenue that may take effect before we actually hit the building permit on this development. So, exactly. So. Okay. No, I just wanted to make that point. That was the only thing I noticed. Anybody have any other comments on this application? <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Yankoff, do you have any comments? Uh, no. Um I good project. Um, I'll be definitely supporting it to move on to council. Thank you. And Rosemary? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I had the same concern as you about the left-hand turn across three lanes of traffic, so I really would support that another option be developed around that. Yeah, and as we heard, that will be something that we'll be able to see again. This is just kind of the first step to get to that point. And Madam Chair, yes. the... Um, David, this came up when uh, McQuaid's developed uh, the property directly across from UPEI. Was that left turn in? They did have a left turn in before the lights, but th now that is optional for, for, for obvious reasons. You have to cross two lanes of traffic. And as the uh, chair said, coming out of this property, 503, yeah, it's, 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 it, it, they call it a suicide uh, sling trying to get out there because that it would be very dangerous. Also, I just, I know that the, the councillor from Ward 3 would appreciate this, but it was the Maritime Christian College, but previous to that, it was the Precious Blood Monastery, yes, Catholic Church. I just wanted to make that clear because I, I remember going there for prayer reasons. Anyways, get back to this. If you look at page 86 of our document, this is one of the comments that, were, that was made during the public meeting. There shows a dramatic uh, transitions, uh, transition against our surrounding buildings. Uh, it should be which is against the official plan. And she tr strongly urged council not to approve the request. There are various exceptions noted. The development is proposed seems to be 
It seems too big for the site, and for that reason, she urged council to strongly object. You, you must have some arguments that can't count, uh, counter that statement or that view. Uh, through well, through the chair, it I didn't mean, cover that. I, I mean, I, I did. I did note that um, during my presentation that you're 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 in a in a way you're parachuting an eight story building into an underutilized site that's surrounded by low rise, low density development, and that it may there's a bit of a contrast there. But again, the developers are proposing to push this as far forward to University Avenue as humanly possible. Um, to to buffer that impact and they, they proposed multiple step backs to the building to step it back and away from those low density developments. Um, I mean, uh, th this is why we have variances to the bylaw. This is why we have the opportunity for amendments to consider cases which are, are, are challenging the prevailing wisdom on a particular site and whether it's deemed appropriate. Um, again, this is directly across the street from the UPI campus which does have tall buildings, and this won't, when you look at a streetscape perspective, at a corridor perspective, this isn't going to be completely at odds with some of the existing massing, which is directly across yeah. the street from this site. Um, yeah, it's, it's, no, look, I agree with the project. It's a good fit. It's just that when you do get comments coming from the floor at a public meeting, because these are comments that were made, that it's good to get on the public record from a professional planner, especially the manager of development to make sure that we all understand that there are reasons for variances or ex uh, exceptions to the bylaw. And I would say, David, that this is part of one of the three corridors, right, that were identified by um, upland planning. University Avenue, Malpec Road, St. Peter's Road, Longworth Avenue, Lower Malpec Road, North Road. So this fits in, and that's what we were talking about earlier. This is on that corridor, and just remember, the main trunk for T3, our transit system, is University Avenue. So the need for cars probably comes, it will be less because of that transit system that's so robust. So it's a good project for the, uh, for the, uh, for the city, for the university, especially the university and the surrounding areas. So thank you for your work. And through the chair, you're welcome. And I'll just note, it was noted during the presentation that putting more density at this location especially 100% rental, rental units, could take pressure off of the rental market in other areas of the city. So again, we're not, we don't zone for people. We can't predetermine who's going to live in the building. Likely it may be students because of proximity, but you're talking about students that may live other parts of the city now migrating to a more central location that's much more convenient for them uh, for their day-to-day -day, uh, activities and, and attending classes. So. Close so, to the grocery store, yeah. close to everything. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. So uh, staff is recommending that we move this on to council for approval on this reason. Well, oh, yeah. Right. Councilor Beck and seconded by Jackie. All those in favor? Everybody here. Deputy Mary Yankoff? In favor. And Rosemary? In favor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David, for those very detailed reports. We're moving on to Michael, who's going to propose a subdivision of 450, 460, 466, 470 Mile Pack Road with PIDs 134999, 134981, 135004, and 744961. Thank you. So uh, despite this being in the subdivision section, it is a consolidation request, so creating uh, one parcel out of the four uh, PIDs. Um, it, so the consolidation request is at five, uh, 450, 460, 466, and 470 Malpec Road um, with those PIDs that are listed on the screen. Uh, this, is on, uh, this is near Melody Lane uh, and kind of on the northern side of the city. The request that we've received, the applicants, PEI, Department of Housing, Lands, and Communities, have made an application to consolidate four properties located in the highway commercial C2 zone, fronting onto the east side of Malpec Road and onto, Mal and onto Winslow Road. The application is being sought in order to develop the parcel under the current approved zone. There's no uh, concurrent zoning request. 
The application indicates that the property will be used for affordable housing units, though at this time, a specific use or development is not being proposed as part of this application or in tandem with this application. So that would be at a future state. Um, you can see the parcel here. So uh, it's a little hard just with the orange on the red, but you can see the ones that are outlined on red over here. So these three parcels here and this large one here, and then there's a small remnant parcel there, uh, just a part of that other one uh, to the north or to the uh, east. The subject properties are located on Malpec Road with a frontage on Winslow Road. The properties are near an intersection with Melody Lane. The lots were originally developed with single family homes on the three longer lots and with a motel uh, on the lot that is partially on Winslow Road. Um, you can see kind of the consolidation request here. So uh, taking those three uh, formerly residential lots and uh, the one to the north and kind of combining them to create one uh, solid parcel. Previous applications on the site have su successfully sought C2 zoning and some uh, of the buildings have been demolished. So those, the rezoning occurred in 2012 um, and the demol demolitions are kind of ongoing um, as the uses are, are phased out. Previous applications indicate that the applicants have also sought approval for new access solutions with PEI Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, though a change to access and site plan approval are not being sought in tandem with this application because nothing's being proposed currently. Um, so as you can see, the uh, positives are allowing the consolidation would enable the site to be designed comprehensively uh, in, in the future with shared access and servicing rather than four piecemeal developments on the current parcels that have to correspond to those um, setbacks and, and regulations. It would allow the, cons the consolidation would enable the site to be designed without setback constraints created by the current lot lines approved for the now demolished single family dwellings. Um, so it wouldn't be creating the limitations of those thin kind of lots that, trans uh, that go quite deep. And the consolidation is being sought in order to facilitate flexibility for future development consistent with the existing permissions in the C2 zone. They're not seeking any new zoning approval. Um, a neutral uh, kind of aspect of the development is that it, it does match the frontage requirements and the lot area requirements of the current zone. We didn't find many consolidation risks um, through the, through the uh, review process. Um, so we didn't identify any shortcomings. Planning and Heritage Department encourages planning board to recommend to council to approve the request for the merger of four identified properties located at 450, 460, 466, and 470 Malpec Road uh, with PIDs 134981134999135004 and 744961 to create a new consolidated lot subject to the pinned final survey plan and a perimeter deed uh, with the description being registered describing the out uh, outer boundaries of the consolidated parcels. Thank you very much, Michael. Kind of addresses what His Worship was talking about in our committee meeting, getting some more affordable housing units going and uh, make public housing make sense, and it's a great spot. Um, great report. Uh, anybody have any concerns? Sure, I have or a question. Of course Glad you I'm have a question. I made it. Just wait, though. Let's Daryl, okay. Daryl. I, I don't want Daryl to leave yet, because Daryl, I think, is working on this project. Actually, I'm not. But okay. The reason I, I, I asked Daryl to come back, because this is part of the Rapid Housing Initiative that the city received $5 million from the federal government. We coupled that with the province, and it's to build 84 affordable housing units, actually public housing. So this consolidation hopefully will move this much quicker because um, they were to start in November, last November I think was the start date. Um, it's, it's, it's behind a little bit and I'm hoping, I'm like, I'm praying that this will move it quicker. And I do want to note <clears throat> on page 100, many, not too many times do you see no shortcomings, no negatives. So that's a green light for this to work. Again, Madam Chair, it's on that corridor that we called Malpec Road, University Avenue, Lower Malpec Road, North River Road. St. Peter's Road. New rink. Run. Everything's happy. Everyone's happy. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Deputy. Let's make a go forward, Daryl. De <laughs> Deputy Mayor, any questions or comments? No questions um, and no concerns. Thank you. Rosemary? Uh, 
no, I guess my only question would be, what do we know what the rent would be for affordable housing in these units? No, no I wouldn't think that we'd even be able no, to determine it's based that. On the provincial, and their, it, yeah, it's and their rent, regulation rent of income. percentage so of what their income is, 25% yeah. or something, 30, would be right. yeah. what public housing would be, yeah. Any comments on this particular application else? Seeing none, uh, can I have someone move uh, staff's recommendation? Uh, Chris Fournier, seconded by Councillor Beck. All in favor? Deputy Mayor? In favor. Okay, Rosemary? In favor. Thank you. One last, uh, any new business? Introduction of new business? Seeing none, because I'm not looking. Is it just one more motion? Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved by Bobby Kenny, second by Chris Fournier. All those in favor? Have a great night, everyone. Thank you.